Next thing we'll talk about is period, which is a rather important property of the wave. So a period is the time that it takes for the wave to move one wavelength, right? So it's the time it takes for a, croft, uh, a crest or a trough to move from here over to the next crest or trough, right? So it's a time and we measure it in seconds, as you might expect. So during one period, the wavelength travels, uh, the wave travels one wavelength. And that means that after one period, it looks exactly the same as it did as when it started. So the period is the amount of time it takes for the wave to travel a wavelength. Closely related to the period is the frequency. So the frequency is how many wavelengths pass through the wave every second. So it's it's looking at, for example, the crests of a wave and having a fixed endpoint and counting the number of crests that go through that endpoint every second. So you would measure this in per seconds or waves per second. Fortunately, because per seconds is a hard unit to use, we uh, invented a new one. We measure it in hertz, where one hertz is one per second. That means that if a wave has a frequency of five hertz, then it means that five wavelengths go through a fixed point every second. So it's related to the uh, period pretty easily. The frequency is one over the period. The other way we can say this is that it's the reciprocal of the period. So we can see that if the period is measured in seconds, then the frequency will be measured in per seconds or hertz. A beam of light traveling at uh, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, which is a very fast speed, 300 million meters per second, has a wavelength of 500 nanometers. Very small wavelength. Find its period to three significant figures. Now how do we go about doing this? Remember that the velocity of a wave is given by distance over time, wavelength over period. So the period is what we're trying to find. There's our equation. Now how do we make the period the subject of the equation? Well, we can multiply both sides uh, by the period, assuming the period's not zero, and then divide both sides by V. T equals lambda over V. All we need to do now is substitute in our values for lambda, 500 nanometers, and V. Uh, 300 million meters per second. Now, we're given the, the wavelength in nanometers. What we need to do is turn this into SI units, that is, meters. Remember that the conversion for nano is that uh, 10 to the power of minus 9 meters equals 1 nanometer. Right? So, uh, we can substitute in these values. That will turn out to be 1.67 times 10 to the minus 15 seconds, which is an incredibly small amount. Beams of light have very, very small periods, and it's often uh, more useful to measure them in terms of their wavelength than in terms of their period.